Hello, Utah Virtual Academy Digital Photography student. I am making this video because I want to make sure that you are taking your tests open book because I want you to ace them and I want you to learn at the same time. Let's just start here at our class homepage. Reminder, if these links aren't showing up over here, you need to log out and log back in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just um, go into the content, and we are in week one. So I'm going to click week one, and we didn't have any live class this week because school starts Tuesday, right? Hopefully you've completed your orientation and quiz. If you have not completed that, could you please just stop what you're doing and go and do the orientation and quiz for me, okay? And then when you come back, you can do this reading and week one test. So when you pop in here, you're going to notice that you've got unit one, introduction, digital photography, and we are just going to read through that, right? You may have already done it, so maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, because I think I'll do that in the orientation. But after you get done with that, you're going to come into unit two, how it all works, okay? And this unit is the unit you'll have your first test in. So that's why I wanted you to watch this video so that you can see how I want you to take your tests. So the first thing that you're going to do is the test is right at the top of the unit, okay? You're going to right click on it and where it says open link and new window, click that. And then just size that down so that it doesn't take up the whole window. Or if you're lucky enough to have a second monitor, and you can get monitors very inexpensive at pawn shops. Um, grab a second monitor. It makes uh, school online a lot easier. So once you get that test opened up, you're going to go ahead and start the test. It's going to look a little different on your angle than it does on mine because I'm a teacher. And the questions are going to come up here. So the first question is, what port in your computer will you use to plug in your camera? USB, serial, firewire, or ethernet? So we're not going to guess, okay? We are gonna start over here in this other window. We can resize this one as well. And we're gonna go to the unit 2.01 introduction and we're going to look for the answer. So how it all works, introduction. Photography has always been based in technology. In the early days, it was both operating the camera and using chemistry. The photographer had to mix all of the chemicals and spread them on a glass plate. Then came operating the camera. Finally, it was back into the dark room for more chemistry. If everything went okay, there was a successful image. We've come a long way since then, but there are still things a photographer needs to understand. The manufacturers want you to think photography is bulletproof now, but there are still things you need to understand to make your images really successful. On the technical side of things, you need to understand the basics of the computer system that takes the place of the darkroom. And there are some things you need to understand about how your camera works. These will give you the foundation for taking and processing your photographs and it really isn't as painful as it sounds. I'm just looking for my little arrows. There they are. Next. Okay, so that was part one, and that didn't answer the question. So we're just going to keep going because these questions are going to go in the same order as the text, okay? The system of digital photography introduction. Before digital photography, there was the camera with all of the lenses and gadgets. Then there was the dark room with enlargers and trays of chemistry. These two parts of the process were always thought of as being very separate. But in digital photography, we need to think in terms of the entire system. Settings in the camera can affect how the image is processed, the size of the image or how the image is printed. The computer is the digital dark room. Whether it is a desktop or a laptop, it has to be thought of as part of the system you use to make the final image. This is true whether the image is going to be printed, displayed on the internet, sent in an email, used in a school paper, used in a letter, etc. Still didn't see the answer, right? What are we looking for? We're looking for 
What port in your computer will you use to plug in your camera? We're going to get there. Here are the section objectives. After you've completed this section, you'll be able to evaluate your computer for digital darkroom use, analyze problems in the monitor display for digital imaging using a gray ramp, calibrate the monitor display for digital imaging, identify the software you will need for your digital darkroom. The computer. If your computer has a built-in media card reader, or perhaps you have one in your printer, you can ignore this page and go on to the next. To get your digital darkroom ready, make sure you have an open USB port on your computer so you'll be able to plug the connector from the camera into the computer and transfer your image files. What port in your com camera computer will you be using to plug in your camera? USB. All right, so hey, did you see? The answer was right there. So next, this is called taking an open book test. How much RAM or random access memory is recommended for your computer to be used in a digital dark room? Well, guess what? You're just going to keep reading. If you don't have an open USB port, you'll have to unplug something so you can connect your camera to your computer when you want to move your image files from your camera to your computer. You know what? If you don't have a USB port, um, if this function, this process is not going to happen, you've got to have like, you know, the little card inside and hopefully your computer, you can just pop that card in. That's how mine works. I just pop my card in. Um, if you're using a cell phone, it's awesome to plug it in via USB port. Another way, a lot of people have their cell phones and they panic because they can't plug a USB cord into their computer for whatever reason. I don't know. But if you're panicking and you're like, I can't make it work, just email it to yourself. You can open the email on your computer and download the photograph onto your computer from your email. Does that make sense? So some new technologies allow images to be transferred to your computer even without cables and USB connections. They include Wi-Fi enabled digital cameras and memory cards, Bluetooth wireless transfers and cloud-based media transfers and storage. The computer. Why do you need to worry about the digital darkroom before you ever get to the photography? Well, if the computer isn't set up to work with photographs, all of your hard work to get the photographs will be lost. So make sure that you can do this. So you need to look at a few things to make sure your computer is ready to work with digital images. You don't have to have the latest fire breathing machine, but you need enough memory, at least one to two gigabytes of RAM or more. This is especially true if you are the kind of computer user who has a couple of programs opened and a chat going while working on other stuff. To archive and back up your photographs, it's a smart idea to invest in a relatively inexpensive external hard drive. If your computer's hard drive fails or your computer breaks altogether, you won't lose all of your pictures. Cloud-based media storage is also a good idea and basically does the same as the external hard drive. So guys, just a simple thumb drive or USB, you know, those little drives that you can plug in, that's considered a backup. So you should probably be backing up, you know, papers that you've written and all kinds of things because if your computer ever has an accident, you want to be able to have access to all of that work, right? Because that's the hardest part about losing a computer isn't necessarily the computer itself. It's everything that you had stored on there. You need a big enough hard drive to hold the images you're working on. Usually a 100 plus gigabyte hard drive will do for your computer. You probably, you know, depending on whether you're going to be taking a million pictures or not, you don't necessarily need to have a ton of backup, just enough to support however many pictures you plan on going through. I go through a lot, so... All right, let's see, what does this say? How much RAM memory is recommended for your computer to be used as a digital dark room? Oh yeah, we covered that. It says one to two gigabytes or more. So here we go, one to two gigabytes. So see, the answers are all right here. What kind of drive will you use to archive your photographs? External hard drive, right? So what does that say? To back up your photographs, an external hard drive. So the answer is right there. So this class is very easy, um, especially if you're going to actually just do this little process. It doesn't take you that long to read through it. You're here to learn, so just do it. 
what is the minimum hard drive capacity for storing digital images? Mm, it says 500 plus, so let's go ahead and just click that. So there we go, boom. Oh, you actually, let's see what it says. You need a big enough hard drive to hold Usually a 100 plus will do. Okay, let's do the 100 plus. Is it on there? No, okay. Well, oh yeah, because it's uh, external hard drive. So we'll go with this external hard drive, 500 plus. Okay, that's why it's important to read carefully. It's easy if you're going fast to miss what it's actually asking. In order to prepare you, your monitor for digital darkworm work, you have to guess what? That's going to be on the next page. So I'm not going to do the entire test for you, but look, System of Digital Photography Checkpoint. Take a few minutes to practice some of the new vocabulary you've learned so far about digital photography. And there are some flashcards right here, so don't skip this stuff because this is good for you. The secret to being a good photographer. Mm, telling a story. Nice. Next card. A good way to archive your photographs. Store on a thumb drive. I talked about that. Yes. You don't need a USB port if you have one of these. A media card reader. Minimum memory in your computer, one to two gigabytes of RAM or more. You must have an empty one of these to plug the connector from the camera into the computer. USB port. Excellent. So that is how this uh, the reading assignments and the tests are going to work in this class. Pretty simple, really doable. That's how you get your points. Just do it. Thank you, guys.